Hey guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to see how to set up Kubernetes on Amazon EKS. Amazon EKS is a Kubernetes managed services which stands for Elastic Kubernetes Service. I have prepared a procedure how to set up this EKS on my GitHub repository. Let's go and see that. This is my GitHub repository called Kubernetes. In this, there are multiple documents where I have shown you how to create a Kubernetes by using COPS, Kubedium, and now we are discussing about EKS CTL. For these two methods, I have already prepared videos and uploaded in our Velaxi platform. Please go and check it out. Now let's discuss about EKS CTL. It is simple procedure to set up the Kubernetes. To start with this, we need an EC2 instance. We are going to set up this. Next thing, there are four steps in this and uh, fifth step is to validate okay among these four steps first step is set up kubectl so first thing we need to download it then it is 1.19 i think we are downloading but anyway we can still use 1.20 or 1.19 so download kubectl version then grant execution permission for the binaries then move it into slash usr local bin in case if we don't want to set up the path variable then we can move the executables onto this location it automatically picks up whenever we run the command next thing test our kubectl installation so these are the commands we should follow first command is going to download the packages second command to grant execution permission third command to move on to the slash usr local bin fourth command just to check the version second step is set up eks ctl EKS CTL is a specialized tool for to set up EKS. Here again we need to download and extract the binaries. Then we need to move it into the USR local bin. Again we can test it by running the EKS CTL version. So these are the commands for the same. And the third step is create an IAM role and attach it to the EC2 instance. So these are the IAM policies which we need to attach to our role. Next thing we just need to create a cluster. To create the cluster this is the command. Anyway, I will explain while executing it. To set it up, first thing is we need to create an EC2 instance. Let's go and create it. Launch instances. And I am choosing Amazon Linux 2. And free tire is enough because it is a bootstrap image. And uh, we need to execute the kubectl commands from this system. That's the reason T2 micro is sufficient. Nothing to change over here. And here as well. I am going to give the name EKSCTL Bootstrap. Okay. Next, configure security groups. So, security group we can create if needed or we can choose existing one. Either way is fine. We just need port number 22. Let me create the new security group and EKSCTL SG is the name I am giving for this. Next, launch. And I am choosing my existing key pair that is DevOps key. Select it and launch it. So, as prerequisites, we have set up our EC2 instance. Now it's time to connect to this EC2 instance. Okay, this is the one, and this is the public IP of our instance. Let's connect through mobile extern session SSH. I have loaded my key pair. And user is EC2 minus user. Alright, now let's become a root. Now we need to install kubectl. For that, we can grab the commands. So, this is the command to download the kubectl. I am downloading under my root directory, nothing but slash root, that is the home directory of your root user. Okay, download is completed. Now we need to give the execution permission ch mode plus x kubectl. Okay, next thing we need to move it onto kubectl onto usr local bin. Okay, that's it. Now I can check kubectl version. Yes, I can see major version is 1, minor version is 19. That's it. I can say our kubectl binaries are set up. Next thing we need to set up ekctl. Here we need to first download it. This is the command to download and we are downloading onto TMP. 
then from TMP to we are copying onto USR local bin then checking the version. We can execute these three commands at a go. So this is to download and the next thing it moved onto the USR local bin and I can check this path. Now two are there because kubectl also we have copied now ekstl and ekstl version is 0 0.57. Alright, so next thing is create an IAM role. We need to create IAM role with these privileges. Let's go here and uh, services IAM. Okay, we have already a role with the ekstl but anyway I will show you how to create a new role for this. So create a role. And we are attaching it to the EC2. So select it. Next. And privileges. We need to give IAM full access. Next. Cloud formation because everything is run with the, sorry. Cloud formation itself. This is another privilege. And VPC full access. Okay. EC2 full access. Okay, these are the privileges we should give, but to make sure we are not encountering with any issues, I am going with the administrative access. And this is not needed. I am going to give bootstrap role. Okay, so we are giving these privileges along with the administrative privileges. That's okay because it is a lab. Okay, we have created an IAM role now. This role we need to attach it to our EC2 instance. So let's go back and select our EC2 instance actions. It will come under to security group, modify IAM role and bootstrap role. That's it. Now it's time to execute our EKCTL command so that we can create a cluster. I'm going to pick up the command from here itself again. So this is the command you can see here ekstl create cluster minus minus name cluster name here we need to specify the cluster name minus minus region region name minus minus node type instance type minus minus nodes minimum to nodes maximum to so these are the default values in case if you want to strict with only specific availability zones we can specify those by using the us is to 1a us is to 1b like that okay this is the another command okay example command how we can specify now i'm going to take this command and modify little bit according to our necessity so this is our command cluster name i'm giving as a Velaxi. and region name our current instance is running on mumbai that is ap south one i'm going to use the same thing ap south one and instance type by default it creates m5 large i believe so for our testing purpose t2 small is sufficient and minimum maximum these are the default values so no need to specify and also i don't want to strict with any specific availability zones so i am removing it if we don't specify it will take by default all availability zones within that region that's it. This is the command to execute it. Okay. My session got disconnected. Let me become a root again. And let's execute this command. And before executing, okay, it hasn't executed yet. Now, this backslash is not needed for last one. I will just go and show you our elastic Kubernetes service and uh, cloud formation because this entire stuff is going to create with the cloud formation template and this is amazon eks clusters if you check there is no clusters once we have executed that command we could able to see the cluster and this is the stack okay we are going to see the new stacks with the Velaxi. okay whatever we just tried all right let's go back and execute it it is going to take at least 15 to 20 minutes to set up. We need to wait for that. So it is setting up the Kubernetes version 1.20. That is the one it is going to do. And this is the subnets. You can see here it is using three subnets. It can create among these three in any two availability zones. By default, two are the minimum and maximum. All right. So let's wait and see.
So you can see here in the background it is running a cloud formation template. Let's go and see that. So yes, this is the cloud formation template create in progress that is EKSCTL Velaxi cluster. It is trying to create a cluster. Once it is done, it is going to run one more cloud formation template that is I think node group and once it is completed I mean to say our cluster is completed we could able to see new instances under our EC2 so far there is no new instances apart from our bootstrap server and also here I mean to say EKS we can see the cluster okay but it is still under progress it is under creation process 1.20 and if we go here and configure that API server endpoint usually this is the one which we are going to use it in the later point of time once the cluster is set up but we don't create cluster by using the Amazon EKS GUI usually we need to create it from bootstrap image why because if we create from here I mean to say from the Amazon EKS you need to manage it right for manage again you need to create the bootstrap image rather than that first create a bootstrap image and Creating a cluster from here itself is a best practice. Let's wait for some more time because it is going to take 15 to 20 minutes to complete. You can see here, so it's completed a first cloud formation that is EKSCTL Velaxi cluster. And if we go and check in our cloud formation, yes, it's completed and it is running the new one that is EKSCTL Velaxi node group. So now it's creating a node group and also if you check by default it took two minimum and two maximum nodes. So now in the cloud formation node group it is going to create the EC2 instances. So far we don't have EC2 instances yet in our EC2 console. Let's wait for some more time. Alright our cluster is ready. It is around 620 and we started it around 557 which means that 23 minutes it took to set up the cluster and if you see this this is the configuration file it use whenever we execute the kubectl okay so kubectl will look after for the master node in this configuration and it communicate with that one but in this service the master node is managed by the aws itself so you cannot able to see the master node in your ec2 instances if i refresh it you can see only worker nodes not master node so this instance size is t2 small and uh, if you see here this is the actual master node anyway master is managed by the aws cloud and to validate it we can just execute kubectl get nodes okay it is going to list out the number of nodes which are associated with this cluster okay at this moment we have these many nodes and if you want to see the cluster kubectl get cluster oh, sorry EKS CTL sorry it is EKS CTL get cluster okay it is list out the clusters which are associated with this one but so far we haven't set up the region now we need to give region AP south 1 okay so it will list out the what is the cluster is associated in this region to validate our cluster one last thing I am going to do that is we are going to create a pods. If I check e sorry kubectl get pods. So far we haven't created any pods. kubectl run pod name of the pod. I'm going to give tomcat and minus minus image. We are going to specify the tomcat. So it pulls the image from the Docker Hub. Create a pod out of it. So if I check now again pods, you can see it is creating a container. Okay. Whether it is successful or not, that is secondary. But overall, this is how we can create a cluster. Hope this video helps you to create a Kubernetes cluster on Amazon EKS. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video.